Hi everybody. Hello, Noga. Hi, Gil. How are you doing? Still sick? Still sick. <laughs> Welcome to our Game of Thrones season eight, episode three, Q and A. Oof. So when the episode ended with Arya, spoiler alert, killing the Night King, everybody was like, "What the?" So immediately we reached out to our patrons, viewers, Twitter followers, Facebook likers. Give us your take, questions, comments. Boom, let's get right to it. Jessica, boom, patron. What is the point now of Bran being the Three-Eyed Raven? Did you for a moment think slash hope, as I did, that Bran was working with the Night King, welcoming him to the Godswood, that Bran would turn out to be an actual villain? Yeah, we were like, maybe they're working together. Maybe they'll say something to each other. Yeah. Maybe something interesting was going to happen. Yeah, this kind of just an, a, an interaction, something that can maybe shed some deeper light on the story. Just something, just give us something, you know? They gave us nothing. <sighs> and Alison Case Anderson from Facebook. Hello. Cinematography was incredible. True that. I cannot believe they tied the great, the great War up with a pretty bow like that. I thought the Night King was going to kneel in front of Bran again. Arya was awesome, but Bran being the Night King's ruler would be a political moral nightmare. I mean, the Night King was not out, uh, out for Brandon Stark, like Bran Stark. I thought he was going to say a hi, Brandon, hi, something, something. That they know each other. Or old friend, or I don't know, like, because uh, he's not, Bran is not only Bran, he's like the accumulation and amalgamation of all the, the three-eyed ravens of the past, and the Night King has a long history with them. Yeah. So I thought that there was going to be some acknowledgement of that. Maybe like the moment, oh, we finally, you know, we finally meet face to face. I don't know. Probably not something as cliche as this, but just something. It's already better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Smith, 2014. Feel, wow, feel extremely bad for all the crew members who froze their asses off for something so bad. Zero tension due to the plot armor and then spoiling their own surprise ending. Zero visibility, literally. Okay. <coughs> Faye. Hello again, Faye. <coughs> LOL's Death of the Night King was anticlimactic and Theon's death. What purpose does it serve? Why were Bran and Theon on the, goods, uh, on the gods would then? Can't wait for the real battle for the throne. I, so why were they uh, over there? I, I guess they needed to recapture the, to go back to like point zero, to have some kind of like the same terms of the Night, the Night King's creation and his... Uh, why wasn't Arya waiting there uh, in the trees, say, or, or hiding behind a tree? If the plan was to lure him there and then be able to kill him, why have her over there? Bran, why, why was that always part of Bran's plan? It wasn't part of his plan. I guess, you know, they would say that uh, it wasn't part of Bran's plan, but it was part of the thing, whatever that is, that is directing things. The, so, the two douches who write the script? Yeah, so he didn't actually have to tell Arya to be there. He had to trust that she would be. Because, because, it's, in, because it's in the story. And VT, he's living in denial. The Night King will come back or something. It was way too anticlimactic. Anticlimactic, I call it. No. No. Uh -huh. No. No. Why was, it, why was that so anticlimactic? Asks Mehdi. Surely the show doesn't end over a battle of, of, success, of succession. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. This is not a fantasy story that ends with a fantastic res re resolution. It's a political story that ends with a political resolution. Now that the great war with, between the ice and the fire is gone, now the humans have to learn 
how are they going to live together, what will be the, the political structure, Sansa will be queen. It can't be Daenerys. Now, three episodes, Daenerys beating Cersei, Daenerys beating Cersei, Daenerys, 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 boom, Daenerys. No. And Sansa will just be in the north, that's it. No. If, if they change that, go plastics. Pray something if they change who sits on the Iron Throne. So they changed, they said right in the uh, behind the episode that they decided that Arya would be the one who killed the Night King and not they allude to alluded that John would be the one in the in the books. <sighs> William Rush gives it an eight, says few things felt rushed, still great. Hmm. Eli Cash, very intense episode, but D and D, you gave them an uppercase D and D. That's uh, wrong. Have taken intricately woven and complex source material and plugged it into a comic book movie formula. I take uh, uh, objection, take offense to bad mouthing comic book movie formula. Have we? Have you watched uh, Endgame? Super emotional, and this. We're going to talk more about it, whatever, in, uh, in our review of it. Check out our podcast. Boom. It was a masterclass of how you can take this uh, uh, epic CGI fest intergalactic war and turn it into a personal, intimate affair. And Jeff Weber wants to, and yeah, says, maybe that's, Jeff Weber says uh, to, a, to a question, how did she get there? Maybe she was hiding in the trees waiting for them to come. I don't know. If we don't know, it's a problem. Tyler Anderson from Patreon. The episode was kind of cheap in how a lot of main characters survived. I felt like it kept showing characters completely surrounded under or under a pile of the dead, only to come back and fighting in the next shot with no explanation. Actually, I was, uh, I was, I thought that only like three or four were going to die, but then two. What do you think about uh, about that? How everybody survived? Yeah. Oh, they're very much into the, I guess, uh, the elements of surprise and suspense and guessing things. And you think this, oh, no, we're going to give you differently, you know, just doing things out of spite. <laughs> so I didn't feel anything about it. I was just like, whatever. Right. So we have to say that we not only watch the show as viewers, but right. we have to prepare videos afterwards. So we're looking for something that we can have a meaningful conversation later. If we were just watching it at home, just, just for the fun of it, then maybe our... Am I boring you? No, I'm okay. just so tired and sick. Is it because you slept only two hours and woke up at 3.30 to watch uh, the, the show and now you have a full day's work coming up? Yes, that could be part of it. <laughs> and you're sick. Anonymous from uh, Patreon also didn't like uh, the way that uh, the Night King uh, died. Brandon Pollard thought the overall episode was very enjoyable. And he didn't know who survived and who did not survive. Kim loved the death of the Night King. She screamed, so Arya is, or, is Azora High? Is all that irrelevant now? Since the Night King is gone, is that the beginning of the end of magic? Is Arya Zora High? No, there's no Zora High. Is that all is all that irrelevant now? Yes. Nets cuts want to know. What the fuck happened? We don't know, Nets. We don't know. <laughs> I think it's like uh, like uh, Trump uh, issuing his uh, travel ban. It's like we need to stop everything until we figure out what the hell is going on. Right. <laughs> what yeah. Catherine Raymond, boom, patron, dear, dear patron. She was both overwhelmed and underwhelmed by this episode. She says that she never had physical anxiety symptoms due to watching a television show before. The zombie display was fantabulous. I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. However, I expected more significant deaths. Right, both overwhelmed and un underwhelmed, that's actually... Uh, right, big. nothing is uh, spot on, you know. 
It's like either too much or too little. It's right. imbalanced. We talked about the balance before. It's either too much uh, stimuli, uh, stimuli or too little. Okay, okay. So I guess most people were kind of disappointed and also thought it was very, very entertaining because I think uh, objectively the whole battle scenes and uh, the CGI-ness and also, right, the suspense that we felt for specific characters, just like they all, they all survived at the end, most of them. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, okay. Anything else you want to add before we go on? So come on over to Patreon, Gil. Are you a Patreon already? <laughs> I am. I am. It's just a cup of coffee a month. Okay, don't pressure me. Come on, relax. Relax. I'm, I'm buying you two cups of coffee a month. Yes, thank you. But I just bought you a cup of coffee now. Yeah, you pay me back with coffee. Uh, so thank you everybody for watching. We have loads of videos coming up. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. I don't know if you've heard about the book, The Thrones Effect, how Game of Thrones conquered pop culture. This is a vast collaboration with several other YouTubers to look at the Game of Thrones phenomenon from all kinds of different angles to get a better sense of how it has become this cultural titan and how it has impacted our culture we take a look from a political point of view a historical point of view psychoanalytical point of view we take a look at martin's inspirations at the independent media that has grown organically from youtubers and from the audience we pick apart the different arcs the way that the story deals with magic the different ways that you can read and watch the same story. All of this in one book. Once you read the whole thing, you get an all-encompassing look about the story to better appreciate it, to lengthen the Game of Thrones experience as the show is winding down. And the link is in the description. You can get it on ebook. You can get it as an audiobook. Boom. And you can get it as a print book. It is already a number one bestseller in Amazon in several categories. It's a great read. I also edited this book, so I read all the chapters beforehand, and they are fun to read. They're also funny, insightful. You're gonna have a great time reading the whole thing. Hopefully you like my chapter two about the historical and political side and the chapter that I collaborated with Noga on, on the psychoanalytical side. So check out the links in the description. Get your The Thrones Effect book today.